Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about histograms and frequency tables. The two things kind of go hand in hand. Um, All right guys, so let's talk about a histogram, how to read it, and some of the important pieces of it. So um, title is definitely always something you're going, on, going to want to have on your graph. Um, something you notice about a histogram is it looks very similar to a bar graph. However, histograms, have, the bars have to touch. They have to be touching each other. And that's because it represents a, a continuation of numbers. So if you take a look down here at your um, x-axis, it has ranges of numbers down here. Instead of just saying, okay, here are all my zeros, here are all my ones, here are all whatever. Um, it has, okay, th this is, represents anything from zero to two. So that means any zeros, ones, or twos are going to be found in this column. And you can see that there were four numbers in the data set that were a zero, one, or two. Right here, three to five. So this represents all of the numbers in the data set that fell between three and five, or also include three and five. It has to include the numbers here. So you can tell from this bar that would be six. There were six numbers in the data set that fell between or were three and five. Same thing here with six to eight, there were two. Um, another thing you wanna make sure that you always do, um, since we have our x-axis here, you need to make sure that you label it, so have a label on it, your y-axis here, and make sure you label it. And then there's always gonna be a scale on your y-axis. Um, it doesn't matter what the, they go up by as long as it's consistent. So here the scale, it goes up by two every tick mark. All right, so we're gonna go through a couple examples and we're gonna talk about how to find information off the graph and then how to make a histogram and frequency table. All right, guys, let's take a look at this slide. Um, anything that I'm writing on my screen, you're gonna type into the green boxes that you see on um, your Google Docs. So what is the title of the x-axis? Remember that your x-axis is going to be your horizontal axis. So here are all of the ranges, uh, but the actual title here would be pulse rates. Okay, what is the title, oops, rates. What is the title of the Y axis? That's your vertical axis here. And you can see the scale, um, and it just has the title frequency. Okay, how many patients had a pulse rate between 80 and 89? So if we take a look here and find the range 80 to 89, you're gonna follow that all the way up and see where that hits on our y-axis, which is gonna be right between four and six, so that would be five. Now that means that, if we're talking about pulse rates here, um, and this is the a number of patients that had these pulse rates, that means that five people had a pulse rate between 80 and 89. We don't know which numbers they are, but we know that five of them fit between that range. Okay, next. What range of pulse rates was the most common among patients? So for this one, you're gonna look and see which one of the bars in this histogram is the highest and has the highest frequency, and that would be here with seven, and that's 90 to 99 is the pulse rate. So 90 to 99 is the range that was the most common. How many more patients had a pulse rate between 100 and 109 than 60 to 69? So we're gonna look at two different things. 100 to 109, let's see, is right here, and that is four. So we have four people that fell in that range. Um, for 60 to 69, we had a total of just one person here that was in that range. So for how many more patients, we're finding the difference between those two numbers. So we are gonna subtract four and one, which would give us three patients. So there were three more patients that had a rate between 100 and 109 than between 60 and 69. Um, for the next one, it says, how many patients had a pulse rate of 97? If we look at our graph here, 97, falls between 90 and 99. And we know that there are a total of seven people that fell in that range, but we have no idea how many people had exactly 79. So this cannot be determined from this graph because again, histograms show a range. Okay. Um, how, and that says cannot determine from graph. I know my handwriting's not very nice. How many patients had a pulse rate of no more than 99? So that means if we're gonna do no more than 99, then that would be 
99 or less. Okay, so any number that's smaller than 99. So we're gonna count how many patients were um, between 90 and 99, between 80 and 89, between 70 and 79, and between 60 and 69, okay? So if you take a look at 90 to 99, that was a total of seven patients, right? Hits about right here. Um, from 80 to 89, right here, that was five patients. Let me erase that. From 70 to 79, that would be three patients. And then lastly, from 60 to 69, that would be one patient. So the question's asking how many patients had a pulse rate of no more than 99. We have to add up all of those numbers. So seven plus five plus three plus one. So one plus three is four, four plus uh, five is nine, nine plus seven is 16 patients had a rate of no more than 99. And then the last question says, what is the difference between a dot plot and a histogram? So a dot plot, while it's still telling you the frequency, um, the difference between a dot plot and a histogram would be that the histogram has a range of numbers and a dot plot does not. A dot plot would say like, okay, how many were one, how many ones were there? And there would be, you know, four dots above it to represent that there were four ones or four X's above it to represent that there were four ones. Um, again, a histogram has a range of numbers, so it could be like how many fell between zero and three. Um, also, a dot plot um, ha uses dots or X's where a histogram is um, has the bars and they're all touching. So I'm going to write that out. You can type that out and then just check what I've written in a second. Okay, so histograms use range of numbers on the axis because and remember that represents continuous data while dot plots do not. Dot plots use X's or dots and histograms have bars that touch. Okay, so make sure you type that out and let's go to the next slide. Okay, so I just wanna to talk to you really quickly about what you need in order to make a histogram. You need your original data, which we have here. This is cappuccinos made per hour. Your frequency table, which includes the ranges, tally marks, and frequency. You notice that your tally marks and frequency are the same thing. These are just written as tallies and this is written as a number. And then you have your histogram. You can notice here that your ranges on your frequency table match the values that are on your X axis, the ranges here. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and make a histogram, um, starting with the data set, making a frequency table, and then finally the histogram. I had to add my last um, row down at the bottom. For some reason, it was cut off my 12 to 14 range. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, we have a set of um, numbers here at the top, and we are going to fill out the tally marks and the frequencies into our frequency table. So. Okay, and um, this set of data actually doesn't have like a title to it, so I'm gonna go ahead and make one just for speaking purposes. So we're gonna say that these numbers represent minutes to school. Okay, so this is how many minutes it took for people to get to school or students to get to school. So what you're gonna start by doing is you are going to look at the ranges that are given. So zero to two. So we are gonna write down how many numbers in this data set fall between zero and two. What I like to do is mark off the numbers as I go up here and then put my tally marks and then do my total numbers at the end after I've made sure that I've used all of my numbers. For the tally marks, you guys can just put like the number one in here as we go, or like one, 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 one for tallies, or you can use a, a capital letter I, um, whatever you would like to use. So let's start with zero to two. Um, two falls between zero and two. And I think that's the only number in our data set. So I'm gonna put one tally mark. From three to five, we've got four, five, so that's two tally marks, okay? Six through eight, so that does include eight and six. We've got an eight right here, 7.5, six, eight, six and five tenths, and I think that's it. 
from 9 to 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then my last numbers, my last range, 12 to 14, we have 1, 2. Okay? So now we are just going to add up the tally. So from 0 to 2, we just had 1. From 3 to 5, we had 2. From 6 to 8, we had 5. From 9 to 11, we had 5. And from 12 to 14, we had 2. All right, the next thing we're going to do is make our histogram. So on your piece of paper, draw your x and your y axis. And we need to label them. So I'm going to label my y axis frequency. And my x axis, I'm going to label minutes to school. Okay, for my scale for my y axis, you can see that for our total numbers, the highest it goes is 5. So we just need to make our y axis go to 5. So I'm just going to label all the way from 0 being here up to 5. Okay, and for my x-axis, we are going to be using the ranges that we started off with over here for our um, frequency table. So your the first is going to be 0 to 2, then 3 to 5, 6 to 8, 9 to 11, and 12 to 14. Okay, so as you can see, I went ahead and added those to the bottom. If you need to pause this screen right now so you can make sure that your graph is drawn correctly, please do so. You can see that I made a tick mark and wrote 0 to 2 in between uh, the origin and that first tick mark, and then three to five is in between those two. Remember when we make our bars, the um, bars all need to be touching. Okay, so for our first range of numbers, zero to two, we had one number that fell between that range. So for our first bar, we're gonna bring it all the way up to one and make sure that it goes all the way and hits the Y axis. Okay, for our three to five, we had two numbers that fell between that range. So go all the way up to two and make sure that you, um, the bars are touching. From six to eight, we had five numbers that fell within that range. So all the way up to five. Same thing with nine to 11. And then from 12 to 14, we had two numbers that fell within that range. So up to two. Okay, the last thing I added there up at the top was our title and I just put walk time to school. Okay, so now let's take a look at the questions at the bottom. It says, what is the difference between six and eight and nine to 14? So if you look from six to eight, six to eight, there were five numbers in that range and nine to 14, um, that would include these two ranges. So you need to add the numbers that are in 9 to 11 and you need to add the numbers that are in 12 to 14. So 5 plus 2 would give me 7. Okay, so we want to know the difference between the two, so we're going to subtract 7 and 5, or 5 from 7, which would give us 2. So the difference between these two numbers would be 2. Okay, the next question says, what fraction of the data set is between three and five? So if you look back at our table, um, there were two numbers that fell between three and five. Okay, so that would be our top number. Two out of, we would then figure out the total amount of numbers in the data set. So we would add all these up. Okay, five plus five is 10. 2 plus 2 was 4, 10 plus 4 is 14, plus one more would give me 15. So 2 out of 15 would be the fraction that represents the numbers between 3 and 5. Lastly, it says, can you tell from the histogram how many 7s there are in the data set, why or why not? If you take a look at our histogram and um, where 7 would lie on our x-axis, it's between six and eight. Now we know that there are five numbers in this data set, right? Five numbers in the data set that fall between six and eight, but we have no idea how many are sevens. So the answer for this last one would be no, and that's because a histogram shows a range of data, not the exact number. All right, go ahead and make sure that you type all those things in, that you've inserted your picture of your histogram, and you are gonna now do some practice on your own please make sure you check the key and make sure you got the answers correct.